Have you seen this kind of image before on social media and thought, how the hell have they done that? Well, this is the double exposure technique in Photoshop. Um, it's pretty straightforward, actually, once you know the steps. But I reckon it's a really cool way to present an existing image with a totally different interpretation. So if you're interested to do it yourself, keep watching, because I'm going to go through a worked example, which will go through this whole process step by step. I'm Nick from Nick Church Photography and the subject of double exposures came up just this weekend. It was a client in the studio, we were going through a Lightroom and um, Photoshop session for her and in addition to the, all the other stuff we went through she was really keen to understand how to do these double exposures. Now I thought rather than list out all the steps in text, let me just create a screen recording which goes through it much more clearly. Okay, so um, I've got the background and the foreground loaded into Photoshop, so that's our starting point. So they're loaded as separate layers. So I've got background, which is the fireworks, called the layer is called background. And the subject layer is this image, which I've, I've let, la named that layer subjects, just so we keep nice and clear about which bit's which. All right. A um, couple of tips here is that the background works particularly well when it's a very high contrast background. Um, so fireworks in this case, we've got some trees. Trees work particularly well, so against a bright background, lots of tree branches works really well. Um, other things that look really cool is smoke or um, things like mountains and clouds and stuff like that works really well as well. With regards to the subject, um, it can be any image at all. It, do, it is just generally a bit easier if you've got a subject with quite a high contrast with a background like this, because we're going to remove this background in a minute. and the, the bigger the contrast and the easier it is for Photoshop to be able to select those out and um, let's get rid of that background. Okay, so um, the first, that's, so talking about that, that's the first thing we need to do is to, is to cut out um, these guys from the background. Um, we're gonna leave the, um, the, the background layer just unselected for the moment because we don't need that until later. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to cut out our couple because we want to lose this background here because we've got our own background. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to get it to do is let Photoshop select the subject, which it usually does a pretty good job, which, yeah, not too bad here. And then I'm going to um, just going to refine the edge here because we've got um, just a couple of bits that it's missed. Not too bad. There we go, that's around there, and let's just get that piece of hair as well. And we can just get rid of that bit. So let's get rid of that bit. Okay, that's fine. I'll just do that bit as well. Okay, right, so the other bit that looks like it needs, let me just check on black. So yes, we see we're losing quite um we're losing sort of the wispy hair bit here we want to keep that because it's um going to add a really nice texture to the upper top of the image so um just going to get some of that stuff selected as well using the refine edge tool which is that one there i'll just keep on going down here as well Okay, so that looks pretty good. We just check it against um, a transparent background. So yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. So that's gonna be fine. So um, we're gonna just okay this. So that's our selection. And then with Command J, that's gonna create a copy from that layer with the selection intact, and I can get rid of that original layer now. So get rid of that one. Um, oops, get rid of that layer again. Let's try clicking that this time. So that's our layer now without that background. So I can, let's rename that subjects again. Okay, right, so that's a good starting point. So we, we've now got the, um, the subjects cut out. 
So now we've got that um, cut out, we just want to create a solid colour layer um, underneath there. So we're going to pick um, just white. Let's put that underneath them. And so that's just going to give us, give us a white background for them. All right, so just a couple more bits we want to change now is I want to change the crop here a bit because um, I'll hold down shift so that I keep the aspect ratio the same. I'm going to want um, to focus it just much more on there, on them as a couple, but we want a little bit of space around above their heads because we're going to have those sparks and so on coming out. So I think that looks pretty good there. Okay, so that's a good good starting point. One more thing I'm going to do is we want to desaturate a little bit. We, we want to kind of let the colours push those back a bit. So the way I'm going to do that is um, command, um, no, so I'm going to select the subject, subject legs. I'm going to create a clipping mask to reduce the separation. So I'm um, going to create that. Um, adjustment layer. I'm just going to bring saturation down just to that layer, probably about about there. That looks about right. So next, I just want to um, position these. We want to get these two layers positioned correctly. All right. So um, we're going to go to that background layer that we had before. I'm going to turn that on now. I'm going to put the opacity down to um, 50 or so, just so we can see both at the same time. Um, and then using the free transform, I'm just going to move this um, just so we I want to get some of those trees in there. Be kind of nice. Um, be nice if we get some of those. And obviously, we want lots of the sparks and things like that coming from the above them as well. So let's just get that a bit bigger. That'll make for a nice, interesting image. Um, probably about there, I think. Okay, right. So we're gonna hit enter. So that's that. That's that set in place. Um, we can put that back to 100% opacity. All right then. So we have um, both our layers now in the right place, and both are correctly um, aligned and everything else. So we're gonna command click the um, subjects layer, which just re-enables that selection that we made earlier. And now if we, now we've clicked the background layer with that, with the selection of our couple. Now if we click add layer mask here, then it will automatically take the shape of the couple's selection. And so things are suddenly starting to take shape. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to create a copy of this layer which is this, the couple. So we're going to um, duplicate that layer, um, call it a subject copy. We're going to bring it right to the top because what we want is we want to be able to blend these two things together. So we're going to change the um, screen, uh, change the um, blend mode to um, lighten. And then I'm going to take the opacity down by, let's say, down to sort of 50% or something like that, 45%. There we go. So that's really starting to take shape now. Okay, right, so um, we've got this subject copy here. Now what I want to do is make some of the background image really um, start to pop through. So I'm creating a, another layer mask. I'm going to take opacity down to quite low so I don't have... So it's not too aggressive. Um, and then what we're doing is I'm brush brushing in some of the background image into this, into, into the um, couple there. And you can see that this really starts to then um, come out. And I think that is about right. That looks good to me. Um, All right, so great, that looks good. Now, but what we can see has happened is we can't really see the couple's face particularly. Um, and we want to we want to reveal that a bit more. So I'm going to go back to the background image and we click on the mask. Um, we want opacity back up 
to full here. Let's make it a bit bigger so we can see what we're doing. Um, and we just want to, using a black brush again is the, is the foreground colour. We certainly want it around the eyes. I'm going to take that flow down a bit so I've got a bit more control. Um, I really like this. The trees coming up here so I don't want to remove too much of that. Um, Okay, that's looking good. So we can just see a bit of the bit of both of them there. Great. Okay, so I'm I'm going to just go back to white a little bit, just to bring back a little bit more on Josh's face there, so it kind of matches what we've got here. Cool. Okay, good. So that's looking good. So um, what we can do now is we have the background colour as white. And what we can do is let's pick something that's a bit more um, present in the image. So we can just use the dropper tool. We're looking for some tones that are going to allow us to blend really well outside here. And I think this blue is works nice, actually, nicely. So probably something like that. I think that sort of tone is going to be good. All right, good. So that's that's that stage. We've got that looking nice. All right, so the last couple of steps now, we just want to bring in a bit more of the background into this image. So to do that, we're going to select our background fireworks layer again. We're going to do Command J to copy that. We don't want the layer mask this time, so we're going to delete that layer mask, which is going to bring everything back in. And we're going to use, we only want these brighter bits to come in, so we're going to use screen mode lighten again. Now, as you can see, it's a little bit heavy-handed, so it's gone across the whole image. So we're going to create a black layer mask, which we do with the Alt key, Add Layer. And now, using a white foreground, we can just start to bring in the bits of that image that we want, the bits of that layer that we're going to want. And I think we'll just get that bit blue coming over as well. All right, so that looks that looks good. All right, pretty happy with that. Um, all right, so now what we need to do is um, we are going to do a couple of steps now. What the first one is just to um, we want to make a, another solid color layer at the top. We're just going to select something that's going to pull all this image together. So we want to bring a, t you know, make a tone that's in the image already. Um, so it's, but fairly light, we don't, we don't want it to be very strong at all. So something like that, it's just gonna bring it all together. Um, and we're gonna use the multiply for this one. Okay, and then we're gonna bring opacity down because it's far too strong. So we're just gonna bring that down to maybe about 20%, something like that. All right, and then one final step, which, um, does add a nice feel to it. So you click out of everything, we're gonna do Command, Option, Shift, E, which is just gonna reproduce all of these layers as a single image. We're gonna make this one totally desaturated. Um, so that's gonna go black and white. And then we're gonna use Soft Light as the layer. Now it just adds a really nice kind of contrast in here. I'm gonna take the opacity down a little bit to control that. Um, but it does add a nice bit of contrast. All right, cool. So finally, I'm just going to change the crop because just we have different image sizes there. And so that's going to go about there. Let's get that over there. And that's it. So just a couple more steps actually that I'm looking at this, I'm going to just increase the um, opacity of that top layer, that, that one that was adding in that extra contrast, I think just to give that a bit of extra punch. And I reckon that this, this background layer, now that we can see everything in this image, I think we can bring that, make this quite a bit darker. And I think it's going to bring out some quite nice um, details in the background due to the blend modes that we've used. 
So that's looking pretty good to me. Excellent. Okay, right, so um, that's it. Um, if you found this useful, I'd really like to know because I'm happy to create more of these if people find them useful. Um, if there's something that you think I can improve, let me know as well. If you are interested in um, one of my Lightroom or Photoshop workshops, these are sessions that run here in the studio or they operate remotely over Zoom and screen share as well. Um, so let me know and I can send you details. So it covers all sorts of, all the te all the features that we've used to create this example. So layers, masking, all of these, these blend modes. So if any of that stuff is just seeming a bit kind of um, overwhelming, then maybe, you know, that this would be a useful workshop to do. So um, let me know and I can send you details of that. All right, guys, thanks very much. And I'll talk to you soon.